once and still got Tamir ultimated in the same game. Well, obviously, uh, obviously it's not good enough then. Rakdos, yeah. Rakdos does not beat Tamir, I guess. No, I, I killed his Jace. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it beats Jace then, so. Yeah. On the other side, we have Roy Bierman playing uh, uh, white-blue humans. Yep, pretty uh, standard. This uh, Blue-white humans is the uh, basically the anti, anti-zombie deck of the format. Uh, Roy takes a mulligan. He's on six. Yeah. But White Wing is like, you know, the timeless classic. Uh, always always at least the playable. Can, the player can, uh, like the generally player have uh, the two mana white creatures are generally some of the most powerful creatures you can play. Uh, this particular list uh, and most versions have Knight of Glory, Elite Inquisitor, uh, Precinct Captain. And there's some, uh, there's some other cards you can play, but... Uh, Roy supplements them with Dried Militant uh, and War Falcon. Nearly every creature in Roy's deck is a uh, knight or soldier. Yeah, Wor- uh, works pretty well with War Falcon. Yeah, yeah, allows the War Falcon to be a 2-1 two one, uh, two one flyer for one mana. Uh, Roy actually plays about the most amount of creatures that don't trigger War Falcon that you possibly can. He has three Supply Mark Angels and four Geist of St. Traps. There we see Geist of St. Traft. And there's his... Uh, Nemesis, Vampire yeah. Nighthawk. Vampire Nighthawk, pretty pretty sweet there. Okay, so for Chris Cornwell Shield. This might happen a few times. Your opponent can block a two-two mm-hmm. uh, with Geist of Sand Traps, so you want some ways to get it through. Uh, Roy has some of that, which uh, he's got a wide variety of things actually. He's got three Spectral Flight, three Azorius Charm, two Faith Shield, and two Cyclonic Rift, in addition to two copies of a Johnny Caller of the Pride. Not all of those work here, but um, there's a spectral flight. That's the spectral flight, and are we going to see a face shield too? Block says vampire nighthawk. Oh, we've got a, uh, and we have a Zorius charm. charm. Puts Put that nighthawk on, on top. I call that a uh, condemnery lapse, you know. But <laughs> like all condemn, right. I like memory that. lapse. That's condemnery lapse. Yeah. All right. Although, you know, the, yeah. the Nighthawk wasn't attacking. but So, a uh, big chunk of Chris's life total gone from that Geist and Angel combo. Chris down should be down to 12. Uh, no, uh, I'm he sorry. blocked. Oh, that's right, that's right, he did block, I'm sorry. Down to 16 from the Angel. Yeah, so we got... We have saw Mutilate from Chris. Uh, Silverbone Paladin is probably the best pump effect left in White Wing. We don't have on the pier. Right. Um, Silverblade Paladin and War Falcon come down. Yeah, so... Basically, you're pumping your creatures individually, either via Spectral Flight or Silver Blade Paladin. Which is a knight. It is. And then the Nighthawk comes down, and Nighthawk's... Nighthawk looks awesome. And the Affliction. And there we go. We have hey, ourselves a hey, read. don't worry, Roy. I had to read it, too. Yeah. Yeah, Shrieking Affliction. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. So, Roy's taking three here. I like the, the name for this, Rack Dose. Yeah. Uh, Shrieking Affliction uh, has a lot of uh, similarities with uh, a classic favorite, uh, oh, The Rack. The Rack, yeah. That was one. It seems like everybody always played like The Rack and Bl- uh, Black Vice, just both in their decks. I mean, uh, back in the day, it was just like, yeah, one way one or another, other, I'm going to get you. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, Nighthawk trades with the War Falcon there? Is that... Yes. Yeah. Uh, the War Falcon was pumped from the Paladin. So we have uh, the double strike. From the Desecration Paladin. Demon coming down for, uh, for Chris. Chris. Yeah. So now this is another new card. Desecration Demon, mm-hmm. often compared to Abyssal Persecutor. I don't think it's remotely six, six. the same card. No, it's just one of those yeah. one where you're like it's a four mana flying six six. Right. That's uh, that's pretty much where the comparison stop. Persecutor all, always worked with this one. You need a. Uh, a, an empty board, more or less. It, it works if they have like one creature. In this case, because there's no way Roy's gonna sack his guy to tap it when yeah. he can't attack through. And I think that's what's th- that's the thing about Desecration Demon. It's like I, if I'm Chris or if I'm the player playing Desecration Demon, in a lot of cases, you're really happy with both. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna either have a six-six flyer or I'm gonna make it so you're. I'm, I have a removal spell that just sits on the table. Right. So it's, you're happy with both if you can keep the board relatively clear. Yeah. 
And uh, I mean, you put it in a deck like that, so. Unfortunately, Chris played his last Swamp. Because he has another Mutilate in hand, I believe. Which is awesome. If he can, uh... Uh, no, it wasn't. It's just an ultimate price. So ultimate price on a Sublime Archangel, freshly played by Roy, alongside yeah, I thought a he War had a Falcon. Mutilate. But, but yeah, an, a, ultimate price is pretty good there. Although I, I think it might have been a little preemptive. I think he could have done a nice little combat trick, breaking up some stuff, maybe breaking up the Soulbound on Paladin. Yeah, that would have been nice. And Stencia Blood Hall comes down for Chris. I love that card. I'm not gonna lie. That's the uh, shocking land, right? It yes. just basically just does two for yes, like it's, 100 mana or something. It's, it's a really shock six, land, right? but not it's in the way shock, we think of right. a shock land. It's a different kind of shock <laughs> land. Uh, so this is a deal of four. Yeah. The thing about Roy, he's been uh, taking three from that Shrieking Affliction every turn. Yeah, he's taken that, and then he's also, you know, he's declined to I ever think, ever yeah. tap the demon, so the demon actually got in last, yeah, the demon's last turn, him, and, and yeah, that... Rakdos takes yeah. down the first, uh, wow, that was, first game. That was, that was a dismantling from uh, Chris. Like, his all his cards played really well that game. Yeah, they did. Everything did exactly what he well, wanted yeah. to do. I mean, Ultimate Price is a card where you're like, how good is it? There's so many, you know, it doesn't hit artifacts or multicolored creatures. You know, what am I trying to kill exactly? I mean, a Sublime Archangel is a nice prime target. Probably the best one you can kill, yeah. <laughs> for an ultimate price. The ultimate target, I think, for ultimate price. So, um, looking at Chris's sideboard, he's got one copy of Blasphemous, Blasphemous Act, which seems pretty decent, uh, just as a, as a sweeper for him in addition to those mutilates that he's got. Uh, he does have one Mizium Mortars in the main, two copies in the board, uh, you know, just, just as sweepers. Uh, He's got a copy of Underworld Connections, not necessarily coming in here, but uh, just, no, just wanted to note yeah. it because it's just you know n another new card. I like to see uh, I like to see what players are deciding to play. Um, other than that, he's got three copies of Pillar of Flame. I imagine he could bring in here. Nice, I, I, yeah. Nice. Uh, I definitely see that. He doesn't have a ton of red sources. He only has ten. Yeah. So it's a little little iffy, but I still think, I mean, if it pillars in a sideboard, you're bringing him in. Right, so he's, he can go three pillar, two Mizium Mortars, and a Blasphemous Act. That's six cards. That's if he has six cards that he wants to to side out. Uh, the Shrieking Affliction did work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that game. I, I would definitely side out the Duresses. Yeah, you can cut the four Duresses, and uh, you can probably even cut, you know, shave the Rakdos returns. Like, what do you think about that? Like, um, um, that's, well, a, that's definitely an, a candidate for getting cut, but I'd I think you want some amount of discard in the deck. I don't think you want to lean exclusively on Liliana. And, sure, yeah. I mean, Roy just played his, his creatures out, so th that might just be an option on Streaking Affliction. But I definitely think you want at least, like, a couple. But, like, I like all the other cards in his deck. Yeah. So sh what, what do you think? If you cut four Duresses, if you're trying to bring in six, if you try to bring in Blasphemous, Blasphemous Act, Act pillar, three Pillar, two, two Mizzy Mortars, so six. I would cut four <clears throat> Duress. Probably, I might even cut a shrieking affliction or two. Okay. I mean, yeah, I think I, I could. I would. Maybe like one on shrieking page, affliction, yeah. one Rakdos return. This yeah, is I like one of those I things where I, I would have, I would have tried to work out the sideboarding mm -hmm. with a deck like uh, this, with my Velborn Gold deck. Mm -hmm. I definitely worked out that I needed to take out the engine against some of the aggressive decks because I just wanted mono removal and just use like Faithless Looting and Grizzly Salvage to make sure I drew the correct amount of lands and spells. And just be like mono removal and then some bomb creatures. Sure, yeah. Looking at Roy's sideboard, he's got three negate, two rest in peace, three thalia, two divine deflection, three detention sphere, and two pithing needle. So, uh, not too great of a sideboard. Like, I'm not seeing a lot of stuff that's obvious. And yeah. He wants to bring um, in and dilute his aggressive strategy. I think I think Talia would probably work. Uh, one thing I'm really worried about from Roy. Mm -hmm. He's really bad against a Vampire Nighthawk. Yeah. A lot of his creatures are two power. Um, so Johnny's good against it. It pumps him up to three power. Like, Spectral Flight is terrible against Nighthawk. Right, as we saw just, there. just the death, death touch, yeah. I mean, he literally got zero damage, zero right. utility from his Nighthawk. Or from his Spectral Flight against the Nighthawk. Yeah, I don't even... It was almost like, why even play the Spectral Flight? Like, did... Right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it, I think if I'm, 
I mean, he just wanted to kill the Nighthawk, I guess. Right. I that think he played. The yeah. Only reason to definitely played a little too early. Yeah. I think. Um, a Cyclonic Rift is pretty good against it. Kind of like that card in this matchup. I wish it was like an unsummon. Uh, I wish it could target your own creatures, but. Yeah, I'm thinking about that turn. So, I, like, he attack. He had Geist, and he put a Spectral Flight on it and attacked with the plan of using Azorius Charm, charm on, yeah. the, on the blocking Nighthawk. So what was even... It was just... What was the reason for Spectral Flight? No, yeah, yeah not, not much. Sure I mean, what... you like save mana. Yeah, I, don't know. I guess... But like, it didn't, it didn't do much for him that game. It right. didn't do anything for him that game. But uh, I, I don't... If I'm Roy, I think I don't really want to dilute my, my main deck I'd probably take out much. the Spectral Flights for Talia's. Yeah, and that's basically it. Maybe negates instead of Talia's. I don't like having Talia and negate in the same deck. Yeah. <laughs> Seems fair. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Talia's really good in Legacy and I think was really good against the old Delver decks that yeah. were... Uh, but, it's but still, like, like this deck, applicable. That, like, I mean, I'm sure it's Chris's fine. deck but... doesn't have a, a lot of creatures in it. He drew two of his eight creatures. So, sure. like... Being able to see the deck list, I actually really like. You like the Thalia better than yeah. Roy may because Roy saw a black right. aggressive I like deck. It, yeah, I like it from I like Talia from this seat a lot more than I like it from that seat. I see. That that makes sense. Let's see if uh, we get we get some keepers this game. It looks like both players now taking a look at their openers. If you're just joining us, I'm Joey Pasco in the booth with Adam Prosak, and we are covering StarCityGames.com Open Series here in Providence, Rhode Island. Week two of Return to Ravnica Standard, and uh, players continue to build on some of the strategies that we saw last week in Cincinnati. Uh, we see Thrag Tusk making an appearance in some control decks, uh, mm -hmm. and we see uh, some players experimenting with things like Rack. Dose control, Chris Cornwell Shield with a. Uh, uh, we've, we've updated the, the name too. Yeah, just uh, Rakdos. I mean, you can call it Rakdos right, control. So he's keeping his duresses in. And, and he gets. We're going to take right. a look at Roy's hand. So this is, this is for those of you who uh, aren't familiar with duress, this is Gitaxian Probe that doesn't draw you a car. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the most complicated way to yeah, explain exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. It's like a Gitaxian Probe, but it costs black. And it isn't Phyrexian mana, and it doesn't draw you a card, but it steals a card from their hand, if it's a non-creature, non-land. So we see uh, two knights, one Sublime Archangel. Yeah, there's the Knight of Glories there, two of them on the end. One Sublime Archangel, one Glacial Fortress, one Azorius Charm, and one Spectral Flight. So he kept the flights, too. So yeah. both players not on the same plan as us. So there goes Azorius Charm. Uh... <clears throat> Roy has the option, like we uh, say, of uh, just not sideboarding. That was an option for him. Sure, yeah. Like, none of his cards seem particularly potent. His creatures are certainly less effective when they're behind his lands. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I play with my lands behind my spells, but... I'm just messing around. It's, so. it's still going to hit for four this turn, more than yeah. likely. So the, the knight is in play. We saw Sign and Blood from Chris. And uh, knight number two hits the board. And knight number exalted. one swings. Yeah. That uh, brings Chris to 14 after Sign and Blood and his attack. Uh, Chris is under the gun. Uh, knight's one of the few good cards that uh, Roy has against a vampire nighthawk. Yeah, and he, he plays four main. Yeah, it's probably one of the reasons to play a white weenie deck. It likely one of the best. So we're pillar, of pillar of Flame takes, takes out, out one, one of them. It looks like I see another red card. I think Chris might have been just digging for red sources. Yeah, it's uh, because possible. there's a uh, ooh. He's gonna he, another sign in blood from he's Chris. He's feeling the pain. Yeah, this is Suicide Black. <laughs> suicide Rakdos, I guess. At least in this case, it's not really a Suicide Black deck otherwise. Just a sign in blood. So, uh, Pillars one night, plays right. a sign in blood, Ray has passes a couple back. Options. He can either Spectral Flight 
or he can and play another creature if he has one or he, he can play Archangel. Sublime Archangel yeah. and really get his uh, Exalted going. So he has Elite Inquisitor and the and Spectral, Spectral so he's going to so. go for that option. I kind of like that option. Plays a little better against Mutilate. Uh, since I'll have the Sublime Archangel backup instead of just an Elite Inquisitor. Sure, yeah, exactly. And it's still pretty aggressive, especially considering yeah, you gotta Chris has done for your himself. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, Chris is on seven. Uh, looks like Mizium Mortars is going to take out the Knight of Gore. Yeah, and it does. I like that. And if Chris plays another sign in blood here. <laughs> he's dead, basically? Yeah. He's in trouble. But uh, two black mana up. Can't quite see what's in his hand. We, I did see a blood, uh, what is it, Bloodline Keeper in okay. his hand. But uh, not, not, not anything you can cast right now. I'm, the rack. Shrieking Affliction there. That is yeah, that's putting that's, the rack in That's Rackos. real good. Nice, nice work, Chris. Four and Shrieking Affliction. <laughs> He's like, what does that card do? Can you read it? No. All of his Japanese opponents will be very appreciative. Sure, yeah. And I believe we're going to see Sublime Archangel. Yo, bro. I heard you like Exalted. So I'm going to give all your creatures Exalted. I hear uh, Roy doesn't practice Santeria. And Crystal Ball isn't legal. So, uh, Chris is facing lethal from all the creatures. Don't and Mizium Mortars. And... Takes care of the Elite Inquisitor. Plays... Ultimate Price. Vampire Nighthawk. Perfect. So, Chris trying to come back. Take, take three. Plays a, uh... Shockland tapped. Yeah. Alright. This is on the on the on his heels, but he's looking uh, he's looking good. It's, he's deciding if he wants to play an actual. Ooh, a Johnny from Roy. Unfortunately for Chris, uh, oh, that's a nice play. I like that. So double Ajani strike comes to, down. for the no trades. Yeah, double strike on the. Uh, when the Archangel, Nighthawk gets in the way, it's the best he can do. He, he has to get in the way, yeah, otherwise yeah. Chris loses. Right. And so... Uh, that's, a good, that's a good play from uh, Roy. I like it. Chris back on his heels, and, plays uh, a second Nighthawk. Chris punishes him. And Roy's, Roy's going to Rack City. Can't, can't do the double strike this time. Uh, so he just draws plus. his card, gets out of uh, Shrieking Affliction range. But not out of Ultimate Price range. Yeah, I was going to say, why does that Archangel have two counters on it? <laughs> yeah, who cares how many counters it <laughs> It doesn't been. matter now that the Ultimate yeah. Price has been, uh, has been paid here by Roy, but... You feel like the Ultimate Price would cost a lot more than two mana. <laughs> well, it's not you paying the ultimate price. It's not the caster. It's the, uh, I guess, the guy getting the, uh, okay. on the rec receiving end. So it's like, this is what you get for not being part of, uh, oh, man. not being multicolor. <laughs> Stencia Bloodhawk takes out the Ajani. Wow. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that was kind of brutal. All right, Roy's and out now, of rack range, but Yeah, he's out deliberately of, out of rack range. I think he's, I don't know that out he's. Out of Nighthawk range. Night this deck is awesome. This is crazy. So we'll, we'll put this in the shopping cart too. <laughs> yeah, Bloodline Keeper now for Chris, and Roy may have uh, maybe be looking at a closing window here. I think he had the opportunity to really. So I don't push. think Roy has any spells to play. He's just. Uh, yeah. And oh, oh he, uh, is this some frustration uh, from Roy? Yeah, it's just three lands, and there's a handshake. Picks Either up his, that or eh, he doesn't lands. seem that frustrated. 
Well, he, when just, he tossed his hand, yeah, I think he just like I'd be frustrated. Have... He's like sitting there, like I yeah, okay. had. He's a little frustrated. I yeah. played every guy I had, and it wasn't enough. I got you to three, well, I mean, and then I why then he, went, he went land on land. He yeah. got flooded there at the end. Yeah. I think uh, it was nice to keep him out of rack range, but you know he he saw like there's nothing right. nothing he can do. So, uh, so apparently, looks like we have a deck tech. Uh, that will be up later for Chris Cornwell Shields' Rakdos control list. Uh, so, the, so the idiot advances to three and a half.